Yeah, welcome back to the show. Uh, we're in the coffee shop now here, so uh, I think like most good farmers should do, at the end of the season you sit down in the coffee shop with your neighbor and you drink, uh, drink coffee. In our case, this is cappuccino here. Uh, and assess uh, what has worked well in your crop and what uh, hasn't. Uh, so that's what we're about to do here. So, Lee, when you look back at the, the whole crop, uh, were you happy with what we got or not so happy? I think my feelings are mixed. I suspect we'll, we'll run through the details shortly, but we set a goal and we certainly didn't reach the goal. We'll, we'll look at why shortly. Yeah. Um, some things we could have controlled, some things we definitely couldn't. Uh, but I would dare to suggest it was an interesting season. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to do two things. Uh, we're we're going, to, going to first analyze uh, the yield gaps and why we didn't achieve the seven tons per hectare that we had set out uh, to start with. Uh, and then uh, we are going to look at uh, uh, whether we've made a profit or not, so the economic performance of things and what our cost of production was, what our income was, yeah. and maybe also have a discussion on where we might have saved some money. Yeah. So maybe uh, I'll start out with the, the yield discussion a little bit uh, and I'm going to show you something here which I've drawn up on a, on a board uh, because we need to look at some numbers to understand uh, what we mean. So what we have done here is uh, uh, you can see four different yield numbers in tons per hectare and we start on the top. Yeah? So first we did a crop simulation analysis. So we used the crop simulation model Horizon 2000 and we used the, the climate data for the last 20 years, 1992 to 2012 and simulated for the same variety and the same planting data that we used what could have been in each of these years the theoretical yield potential if nothing would be limiting the crop uh, so it's only a function of uh, uh, solar radiation or sunshine and the temperature and uh, the date of cr uh, planting and the variety and things like that so uh, on average uh, the, theoreti the theoretical yield potential in our location would have been about 10 and a half tons per hectare or 10.6 in this simulation. When we then ran the model again uh, and just entered the weather data for this cropping season for our field yeah. as it was in this particular year, the first thing we noticed is that the yield potential in our year was only 8.7 tons per hectare. And you can see the first yield gap here between 10.6 and 8.7, so a difference of nearly two tons, basically yield potential loss or less yield potential due to poor weather this year. Yeah. So we were really, really unlucky. This has been in terms of uh, climate, one of the worst uh, dry seasons that we've had here at our location in the last 20 years. So there's nothing we can do about this, we can't control weather, but right there uh, we had a nearly two ton drop in yield potential. So then uh, when we looked at what we could have harvested, you know, if we didn't have the lodging and the associated yield losses at the end because of the shattering of the grain, uh, we estimated at that time that we had nearly six tons per hectare yield standing there, 5.9 roughly speaking. Yeah. Uh, what we then actually harvested with the combine was 5.24 at the end. Yeah. So we had uh, about uh, 0.65 tons uh, uh, yield losses uh, that were caused at the end, very much towards the end because of lodging and the associated uh, combine harvest losses. Again, not much we can do about that. Uh, the, we've discussed the reasons for the lodging. Uh, I think it was a combination of very humid or rain conditions at the, the, the late stage and the variety that we grew was uh, highly susceptible to that in terms of lodging. Our assessment is that uh, most of this is actually caused by a variety of uh, crop management issues. We didn't think that we had insufficient water or nutrient supply as a reason, uh, but uh, probably uneven crop establishment, uh, a big factor early on, and then a variety of uh, pest problems. So at the early stages, 
We had a lot of rap damage, uh, over 8% uh, assessment at the early vegetative stage. Wall maggots uh, chewing on the leaves, um, and then later we had 5% whiteheads, also yield loss due to stem borers, a number of leaf uh, damaging insects, uh, false smut 8%, some sheaf blight and sheaf rot, weeds 5% occurrence, uh, and probably also some losses due to birds. Uh, so if you add those things all up, uh, each of those has a small contribution, but it can be quite large uh, altogether. Uh, so from a management point of view, I think some of those things probably uh, could have been avoided. Uh, particularly, I think the crop establishment early on uh, was something where we have learned a few lessons in terms of land preparation and uh, uh, leveling and being able to uh, get a more uniform crop established. We did a lot of reseeding and replanting, uh, but still ended up having quite uh, uneven uh, uh, plant stands in some parts of the field. Uh, and when you look at the whole field, then this can be leading to a yield loss. The good news is we made a profit. That's good. Not a huge profit, but a profit. So we grew 5.24 tonnes to the hectare of rice, and we valued it at 14 pesos per, per kilogram here in the Philippines, which is equivalent to about 30 US cents or $300 per tonne of paddy rice. In summary, I doubt these figures are particularly visible to the film, we earned $440 from the field, we spent $350 growing it, so we made, according to this, $84 in profit, which at least pays for the coffee we're drinking and a fair bit more. Well that's for the field but uh, if we extrapolate this to a whole hectare which is what a normal farmer would probably have so that's a net profit of $335 per hectare. So is that a normal profit? Is uh, that what a farmer would be happy? I think happy it's uh, um, probably quite common uh, particularly if you have deep well irrigation mm. uh, to, and pumping costs to cover. Yeah. If uh, you are an irrigated farmer in the Philippines who uh, has access to canal water or for irrigation scheme water, the typical profit is probably more like $500 per hectare. Uh, that's uh, what I remember measuring once. Uh, so we are below that, but that's primarily Really, the reason uh, is because of the high irrigation costs. You know, so which, which probably explains, as you look across the rice growing world, that dry season rice is generally confined to those locations where water is easy and cheap to access. Yeah, it has to do with that exactly way. that yeah. reason. Good, I think that wraps it up. Um, we've not become rich, uh, <laughs> at least we haven't lost money. I think we've learned a lot. Yeah. We have. So we'll promise to do better next time. Right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>